now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. Hello and welcome to the All In Podcast. World has begun. Play-ins has started. We are going to be talking in this episode. The first day of play-ins has already happened, uh, so we're just going to cover that. But then we're going to talk about the rest of play-ins. We're going to talk a bit about maybe the world's meta and the world's patch. We already got hints of it, so this conversation will at least have some context we can reference. Uh, and we're going to talk about the new world song, incredibly controversial, uh, made by Linkin Park. They have their new singer, and yeah, it's been uh, people have been raving about it. Let's just say that. But first, how you doing, Kevin? How's it going? I'm I'm hanging in there, but I do always enjoy World Series. It's my favorite time of the year, so it was oh, really yeah. fun to wake up, get to watch the matches, catch up, and I got to catch the tail end of the last match live. So I was really excited about that too. So that's a, that's a highlight. <laughs> League is always fun. Yes, it is. It's why it's why we're here. It's why we do this. I actually woke up at like 5:30 a.m. and watched uh, most of the Mad Lions and all the PSG series this morning before work. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, let's just briefly talk about those games and then we can kind of like lead it into um, talking about the meta and our thoughts on how the planes is going to play out overall. Uh, but Mad Lions played against uh, VKE. Um, VKE is... Uh, do you, Where are they from? VKE... VKE is the Vietnam second seed, Vietnam. I think, or first seed. Okay. I think it's the second seed. Yeah, Gam is um, the first. Gam is the first seed. That's correct. Um, so yeah, uh, it was actually a pretty fun series to watch. Pretty decent. Um, Mad Lions did 2-0 VKE, and that was expected. But it wasn't like a super convincing 2-0, especially game one. Yeah, game one was very close. I think uh, if you're a European fan or Mad Lions <laughs> fan, you were definitely getting some some flashbacks to previous play-ins. Um, so tell me your thoughts about that series. <laughs> yeah, game one, I thought that VKE had absolutely dog water macro for the early game. I was like, what are they doing? Like a really yeah. rough four man dive for a one for one trade. Uh, and then they had some sus plays all around the place. And then, the, like, I feel like Friskawi, I believe his name is Fresca Friskawi. Yeah. Friskawi, yep. His TP bot lane where they just died double kill. And like, I basically thought Vikings middle game was actually mid game was actually pretty impressive. They played scrappy. They never gave up. They never looked at the fact that some of them just don't have hands um, mm. and don't like Na 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 Ue, the top lane. I was like that guy is he's not very impressive at times, but they managed yeah. to make a lot of plays happen, and it was really exciting. And honestly, like they were like starting to make it happen, and then complete collapsed. <laughs> That's how yeah. I felt about game one. I, I definitely feel the same way where it was the early game was run by Mad Lions because it was like the lane swap stuff and they had uh, Jinx. And I got to say, um, I we already knew it was going to be a thing, the lane swaps, but I'm pretty disappointed that it was pretty much dominated the entire first series. Uh, lane swaps are going to be huge this tournament. And Mad Lions, they picked the, the Jinx early rotation and they just spread her around and lane swapped. And yeah, VKE, um, I, I expect for most of the playing teams, they're not going to be very good at lane swaps when you compare it to the major region teams. That's just to be expected. And I think that was definitely the case. Um, but then, you know, what has been the trend for European teams going to this tournament is that they lose their heads in the mid game, right? They have no idea how to close out games. All of those series we heard about getting really far ahead of G2, not being able to close it out. It came true in this series almost where Mad Lions had a crazy fed jinx, literally a full item and a half sometimes over his counterpart, but they couldn't like get a clean team fight. Like it's not like honestly, Supa, there's a lot of memes about him. He played pretty well. He played almost flawlessly, but he's playing a jinx and his team is running around with headless chickens just dying. So it's not really, you can't really do anything as a jinx, right? You can't. And then he's playing against VKE, which is honestly just classic Vietnam. Reminds me of a lot of GAM, which makes sense because they're from the reason. Because uh, yep. they're just playing champions with a ton of dashes. And they're just hiding and like jumping in and out in fights. There's no like massive like 5v5 team fight coordination. It's all guerrilla warfare. It's all skirmishing in the jungle, uh, which I thought was really fun to watch. I was like, oh, sweet. Like... You know, you look at these comps and you compare what they have, right? VKE, 
they have a bunch of like champions that are very self sufficient, but they have no team fighting. And then you look at uh, Mad Lions team fighting comp. They got the Jinx Nautilus. They got the Cassante Syndra stuff like that. Um, but it was close because Mad Lions just got spread apart, right? They got they got Guerrilla Warfare, so it was fun series. Um, yeah, I would yeah. also say that Mad Lions in general didn't look super convincing in game one. Like it really felt like there were a lot of flaws in their gameplay and like it didn't like yes you know vk was scrappy and didn't give up but like i didn't think i didn't see some like macro genius or some like incredible like levi style play he comes out of nowhere like wow holy cow it was more like what was mad lines doing <laughs> they had yeah. the better early game plan and it felt like they were drilled in that and they were solid and then it just like fell off the rails and it just became a clown fiesta which is fun I really enjoyed watching yeah. it. But I was like, oh my god. Like, some of them on Mad Lions, hopefully it's just like a weak start, because otherwise they are going to get boomed by any team slightly better. Yeah, I, I have to agree. The The main uh, weak points for Mad Lions is Merwin and Frascawi, mm -hmm. for sure. Merwin, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um I don't think I think this is this followed him all throughout the year where Merwin is really good on only weird champions, right? Like he could play Nidalee top, he could play Zeri or Corky top, but if you put him on Cassante like we saw, oh my god, this Cassante was not good. It was really bad. He was running it down a lot. And to be fair, like he was like taking a lot of fights, like skirmishes that maybe he didn't need to, but like he was one of the reasons why it was so close, because he kept dying on side lanes. And I think the same with Frescawi. I don't actually know what his champion pool is too much, except he played a bunch of AD carries, because that was the meta. But his mm -hmm. Syndra was super lackluster, like, pretty bad. He was losing lane to Kati for most of the, the game and most of the series. Uh, but then, you know, let's turn it back onto VKE. Kati... Doesn't know how to use his flash button, so it doesn't really matter, right? Kati was outlaning uh, for Skawi. Kati was, like, I don't know. He ulted more minion waves than he did champions. Like, that's not even sarcasm. That's just true. <laughs> like, he ulted minion waves to clear instead of, like, killing people. <laughs> I, I you know. saw this banger comment on Reddit that was, like, why... <laughs> Why didn't Vikings just sub in Yagao? Their mid laner didn't show up, so are they stupid? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh my god, we're gonna get some. I can't wait for main stage because yeah, uh... Scout is actually gonna be playing for LNG, but for a minute there, Yagao was gonna play for LNG, and everyone was being like, "Well, it's fine. It's like Yagao. He's way worse, right?" <laughs> but um, yeah. But he always denies Chobi for some stupid ass reason. So who knows, really? Yagoat. Yeah, I mean, Yagao is Yagoat because he is a mega inter, but somehow he just clutches up, right? That's 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 the clutch factor. And that's why I do think BLG this year is so much better. It's because they got rid of Yagao, honestly. They got Knight. He's just consistently good and clutch, where, you know, Yagao is not consistently good, but he is clutch. Anyways, we just started talking about different teams. Right. But we'll, back we'll, to... We'll preview it later. We'll, we'll talk about them. Oh, they're going to get their time in the sun, for sure. Um, But I got to say, Viking Esports in Game 1... They, they were so close to really making it work. Like, really just... I also think Nanoe, he had a really bad early game. And I think he got baited into picking Camille and forgot that they could lane swap because he got really wrecked by the lane swaps. Oh my god, it was not not fun for him. Nightmare. Um, nightmare. But, like, once he got into the later game, it's like, okay, he is getting picks. He's really fed. He, he's getting, like, some strong things. But the one thing that was always disappointing to me is he never did the very simple just E flash onto a Jinx ulti her. It doesn't matter if Jinx has flash or not, right? Camille is broken against immobile AD carries with not a lot of peel, right? Like, and like, you know, Merwin isn't exactly doing his job. I actually think VKE, once they got to that mid game point, when Camille has like three, four items, it literally does not matter how many items Jinx has. She will get one tapped and isolated, uh, but they couldn't play it right. Um, and I think it's just cause they were so, both sides were so uncoordinated, right? So. Super Fun series. Twice the whole series. With a comp that yeah. was like Camille. I think it was Camille game one, Poppy support to, you know, do wall bang, to do whatever. And yeah. uh, Oriana, right? With ball or Lisa. Like, dude, how can you not pick a Jinx more than twice in a clown fiesta like that? Yeah. And then same, same with game two, right? Viking Esports. They had the Jarvan Oriana Alistair combo, right? The Giga Wombo, where once again, if. 
It's not the same as Camille, but if Jinx doesn't have Flash, she's dead. There's nothing she can do about it. She has no counterplay at all. Uh, but they never, they literally never got the combo off. Once you got, like, um, <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> they never did. Uh, they, they never comboed the Orianna with the Alistair or the Orianna with the J4 a single time because, like, Kati was ulting minion waves. I Like, the amount of times that there was a skirmish that was really close, and then you realize, oh, Kati, like, 30 seconds before, he just ulted a minion wave. So they don't have Oriana ulti, this big game-changing ability to kill the team, and it was quite disappointing. But whatever, MDK. I mean, they deserved it. They were by, they were definitely the better team. Uh, so they, they won uh, the first round. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the next play-in series. Uh, it was way closer than it was supposed to be. PSG versus Pain Gaming. Um, yeah, they got mega stomped game one. PSG nearly was facing down an upset. Pain Gaming had a really impressive game one. I thought that they played um, pretty high level in that they they were had a good draft. They played to their win conditions and they didn't int right. They they just played very controlled, very steady. They got all the objectives. They got a bunch of picks and kills without going too far and giving some kills back over. So I gotta say, Pain Gaming for game one, like it, it, it felt like a level up right for the region as a whole. This is we haven't seen Brazil look good. In a while or ever even and this is psg a real team so pretty cool stuff uh what were your thoughts on this series so i agree the game one was a it was a giga stomp they had like it was like 16 or something to two like it was like crazy yeah um i yeah. will say i think Brazil actually has looked good recently they just always look good in game one uh there's no, a, a bunch okay. of tournaments where like they they win the first game in play and we're like wow is brazil real and then they just completely flop out of the rest of the play ins looking mm. extremely disappointing um mm. And this this being the swan song for the um for the Brazilian league, what is the CB lol? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty happy with that being at least their opener. I'm not sure if they can maintain it. I think the thing that was disappointing to me is like Chitan is still or Titan, but Chitan is really good mm -hmm. still. And I, yeah. I always got the impression, you know, BRTT, there's like all these uh what was the other guy? The guy who did the flex at MSI Holy, he, no, Holy no, Phoenix or oh. No no no. The the Brazilian guy who like flexed his Oh like, Lobo. Lobo, yes. I think, right? There's like yeah. all these different <laughs> South American AD carries that are actually quite good. But then the rest yeah. of this team is like, they might know how to coordinate in some ways, but they're kind of giga boosted, I feel like, uh, when yeah. I wa the more I watch. Um, still, PSG is one of the strongest teams down here. Even if they looked kind of bad, it's, it might be a testament to how relatively surprisingly good the pain was. Because like, PSG is not playing just in like LMS anymore. They're playing in like, all of Southeast Asia in a United League, uh, including right. Japan for some random reason. Like, that's the league, right? So the PCS is, like, on paper, a lot more competitive than it was before. And they still yep. look good there. So I wouldn't write them off. They usually start tournaments off pretty dog. Um, but they, they then, you know, they they got, like, 2-1 or 2-0'd by FlyQuest before and then 2-0'd them back or something. 2-1'd them back. 2-0'd two them back last time. Yep. Um, so I would definitely not write them off. I think... That we are going to see a little bit more of them, and I hope Pain has a stronger showing afterward. I think Game Three was the hurt, the biggest hurt, though. Like yeah. Game Three, the way that game ended, I I almost like dropped my iPad. I was like, "You can't be kidding me!" Like yeah. this, is, this is not real. So you can you can emphasize it, but I think that was one of the most egregious like lack of like I don't know what they just lost their minds. I, I don't think they have bad team play, but in that game, that was one of the worst fights I've seen all, I guess not all tournaments, so the last five games. <laughs> yeah, it was at the Elder fight, right? Um, game no, three? It was Soul Dragon, actually. But Soul Dragon, oh, okay. It was at Dragon Pit. Dragon Pit. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Pain Gaming, they really tunneled super hard on the Dragon, and they just kind of just kept dying, and then they didn't even get the Dragon at the end, right? Yeah, <laughs> I remember it was Lee Sin karaoke in that game three. He was just trying to auto down... The Wukong, and he just did so little damage. It looked like he was healing him. <laughs> yeah, I remember and, that. And Maple got caught. He, he, oh, he did. So oh, he backwards. A colleague yeah. with Zanya's up into an Ash Arrow. Yeah. After the caster said, "There's no way after he bays Zanya does he get caught here." And yeah, he that caught, was an. Am gets yeah. the seven-one Brazil score in Germany, and then yeah. they still <laughs> the five-four. Yeah. That's so so. That was so bonkers. That was that was an amazing caster curse. It was actually like right on time, right? It was right on time. That was perfect. Um, yeah, let's. 
Okay, and then I think in this series we can talk a bit about meta, because mm -hmm. PSG, I think a lot of people are also going to equate the PSG uh, loss in Game 1 to the fact that they picked, like, 4 slash 5 heavily nerfed champions. Okay, I get. I think Skarner is pretty strong, so we, we won't count him. But okay. four very, very heavily nerfed champions, three heavily nerfed champions. Rel is probably fine, but um, Rumble, right? Uh, this is PSG's draft uh, in game one. Rumble top lane, very hard nerfed. He lost like thirty or forty damage uh, on his Q in the early game. Uh, damage on his E, right? Tristana been nerfed for a long time. Less damage, less health. Increased mana cost on Q. MF lost uh, some base AD, uh, Bloodthirster nerfs that are really big for her, and then Rel lost some like move speed and damage, and then Skarner lost um, you know some random interactions, but Skarner is still going to be strong in this tournament. But I think a lot of people were thinking that how PSG Talon they played on a draft that's like two months old almost, right? Um, so people are saying that maybe that's a big reason why they lost. Um, I also do think that we didn't get a chance to do a meta predictions um, podcast, but we can still kind of predict the meta before the main stage because play-ins usually doesn't represent uh, how the meta turns out eventually. But I actually think Lucian Nami is going to be something that you can play in this tournament, um, which is hilarious because it just shows up every world in the last, like, what, two, three worlds now? <laughs> but uh, Lucian Nami was not present the entire year, pretty much. Actually, no. It was present in the beginning of this year, yeah, uh, but it wasn't present. Four played it a bunch, actually. Yeah, at MSI, um, but it was not present uh, at Summer Split really at all, like ever. Uh, but I do think it's back now. I do think you can play Lucianami legitimately, um, mm -hmm. just because everybody else has gone down. So just uh, interesting that um, we got some proof, right? PSG sacrificed themselves to lose so that we could see, okay, how good is the old meta? Can you do the old meta stuff? Can you play Tristana, MF, Rumble, stuff like that? And the answer was, well, it doesn't look very good. It looks like it's going to be pretty hard to do that stuff. Uh, because Pain Gaming, they went into game two. They picked Rumble themselves for some reason after they just shit on it. And it looked really bad as well. It looked very weak. Um, so, yeah. Interesting meta stuff. Um, uh, and then Maple. Always a legend, always a classic, one of the best mid laners, honestly, in history, kind of. Picked out the Akali. He said, no more of this crap, no more of this Tristana AD carry meta. We're going to pick Akali. We're going to style on them. We're going to outplay them. And it looked really good. Akali looks really strong on this patch. And it is a good counter pick into Yone. And Yone's going to be one of the highest prior champs in the uh, in the entire in the entire world, I think. it's gonna be He's going to be very high prior. So... Expect to see a lot of Yone, expect to see a lot of Kali to counter, and then we're going to see Silas, and then all of a sudden, that's right, Zekka wins Worlds again. Yeah, it's, it's a Zekka meta. Yeah, I gets first Zekkas here, and I'm like, no. Kali looks giga. Now, to be yep. fair, we've seen a lot of things look giga, like Trinimir in previous years, in play yep. And the second yep. you get to good teams, like, not that the playing teams are bad, but, like, the elites the whole viability chart actually can radically shift. Now, I do I think Akali looks better in the hands of better players? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I think Akali and Yone are going to be ones to stay, just because we know there are so many good Yone and Akali players in this tournament, right? Chovy, Zekka, um, Knight is a good um, Akali player as well. So we got a lot of we got a lot of action that we could see, uh, which I'm so glad. I'm so done with this AD carry meta. Oh my god, um, really happy for that. So yeah, yeah that's PSG. Have four AD carries as our world skins. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. <laughs> Honestly, it's still possible, right? People are still gonna like when you get pinched, you're still gonna be able to play Tristana Corky mid. If if people get pinched enough, it's just gonna happen. Yeah. Especially especially because um, I, this is just from Champs Q, but I know Zyra is still strong, still a very strong jungler. She's not out of the meta by any means. The only reason you're not gonna pick Zyra is because you want to pick Syndra, right? And you don't want to do Syndra Zyra mid lane. But if Syndra's banned, if you're picking Yon, yeah, you're gonna get Syndra. You're gonna get Zyra. Okay, they ban Yon. You're gonna get Zyra Tristana still maybe, right? So we'll see what how that goes. Um, so yeah, that, that's a bit about meta. Anything, last things on PSG versus Pain Gaming? I would say the only other last things is I thought Maple. Like, I, we know Betty and Maple and, like, Junja. Like, uh, I mean, these guys have been around the block. Maple played a pretty damn good series. I mean, it could also just be the mid laners on the mid lane. Din Quin, Quin Quido? Din Quido, yeah. Din was not good. But yeah. Maple looked really good this series. And I was like, man, this guy's been around for legitimately over a decade now. Yeah. Pretty sick, that, especially considering he 
he's been around the block. He was on TSM. Like, truly some weird times, right? Uh, he played a really good series. Betty's always been a world-class player, and he shows up at Worlds generally. I just... I need to see more. I think Junja entered his ass off, and like if he plays like that against a real team, like PSG will actually have to worry. But maybe he just didn't care. But he played so badly that it's hard to even say. Most people's autopilot, they still have mechanics, just no brain. I think he had neither. So yeah. I'm very concerned about that aspect. But I mean, it's only one series against an underdog. Yeah, I gotta say for this series for PSG, I was uh, at game five or game three. I was really worried about the Vayne pick top. I was like, it was behind 20 CS in the first, like, 15 minutes. I was like, wait, didn't you guys just lose? Like, you have the most useless top laner. It's a Vayne from behind in the top lane. Mm -hmm. uh, but it didn't matter. Honestly, uh, Maple was just way too fed, way too strong. Um, yeah. So, very interesting. I, I don't know how I feel about PSG going into this tournament. But, like, like we all know, like we said, like, they are, they're like a dark horse, right? To... Uh, to not to win the tournament, but to make some serious damage to upset a team unexpectedly, right? Like yeah. taking BLG to five games, even if BLG is like the type of team to maybe underestimate a lower opponent, like that's some serious business right there. That is tough to do to take a single game off of BLG. So BSG is to be respected. Uh, okay, let's move on and think about the rest of uh, play-ins. Let's talk about our boys. It's happening tonight in nine hours. So I guess it's tomorrow, but it's not tonight. <laughs> but 100... Yeah, yeah, no. 100, 100 Thieves versus R7. Um, I honestly don't know too much about R7 at all. Uh, I think they're called Movie Star R7, which is kind of a cool name. Uh, but, you know, just general thoughts, right? I've seen 100 Thieves pop up in clips on, like, um, you know, my TikTok feed or my YouTube feed. Uh, they're playing a lot of Champs Q. They're doing some hype stuff. Uh, River and Golden Glue, they got spotlights, right? Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on 100 Thieves? What are your predictions? Do you think they're going to beat it? Do you think it's going to be close? Do you think they're going to giga stomp? Or, you know, how, how are you feeling about them? Don't think it's going to be close. I mean, this is just the typical NA take that you're going to you're gonna hear when we're coming into this. But yeah. it, it, I think when it comes to the the mix of their top side, where, which is Quid... Uh, River and Sniper, like, I feel yep. like that is really, that's actually very tough for a regular, like, a normal team to play against. In mm -hmm. the sense that, yeah, they're not the smartest, they're not the best at, like, ma um, maybe controlled macro play, but, like, if there's a hands diff in jungle mid specifically, that's going to be hilarious. Movie Star R7 has been around for actually quite a while. They were actually the most common in Latin America North rep, but their team has mm. changed fundamentally. Like, Audi, I remember, right. And then CEO, I remember. Um, but mm. Summit is their top laner. Oh, that's right. So oh, I why okay. I didn't say General Sniper was going to completely shit on him because I'm like, I don't uh, know. He could still yeah. be good. He could have completely got washed being in the worst region with his attitude. Like, he really said, my teammates are the problem. And then watch Liquid become one of the best teams in the West without him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And actually have the goat in top lane there, so uh, I think it's going to be spicy just for that because I think win and the scene somebody go further and then play against other NATs would be hilarious. Uh, mm. Ideally, if C nine was also here, this would be the perfect time because they would have been the third seed, right? And they would have been in the spot. Yeah. But oh, either way, I want to see our NA talent against who is like arguably the benchmark for top lane laning right the old yep. solo kill king versus the new one um ah. let's not talk about all the new kings too much i'm actually gonna gag but uh <laughs> <laughs> but i i think this is like that makes it more interesting right um so latin america north not traditionally strong but they're also not a pushover region in the sense of like they usually like have some semblance of firepower and then they just kind of flop out they just like run out of steam and so in that sense i think with summit here I didn't watch a single match. So let's not like mince words here. Either. But Adi was good in previous worlds and previous international tournaments. And then, I mean, Summit can't be, he can't be that washed, right? He can't be like Piglet season six or whatever washed. Season five, season mm. six. Uh, yeah, I mean, for all I know is that Summit is going to die in a really stupid way in a side lane. That's just how it happens every time. Uh, if River just goes back and looks at any old VOD of Summit, he'll be like, oh, gank top, and we win. Okay, cool. So I do think that that's probably a possibility. Um, yeah, we'll just see how the meta plays out, right? I, I do think that these are two very similar players in the top lane, though. Summit and, and Sniper are lane dominant. 
aggressive solo kill kings, right? Um, but I think the difference is that Summit has been playing for like eight years or ten years, and Sniper's been playing for less than one. And they kind of seem like they're in the same spot right now. So I wouldn't be surprised if Summit got the edge on Sniper, but I think in terms of long-term development, Sniper's ceiling is way higher than Summit really could ever reach. Um, just because some has been doing been the same player for this long, right? So I, I'm hoping for obviously hundred thieves. I'm it's probably gonna be a two one, right? I, I I don't think it's gonna be a two zero. I don't see uh, hundred thieves just being that clean of a team. Um, and this is all this four of them. It's their first time internationally ever, right? For four of these players on hundred thieves. Um, I do expect Quid to look like probably the best player on the entire series. So we'll see how that yep. goes. Um, all right, really quickly, we can go for Gam versus Shogun. I don't think either of us really covered uh, their regions or their teams, but um, do you know anything about Gam or Shogun? I, I just, like, in my pickums, I just assumed Gam was going to win because I don't know anything about Shogun. All I know, it's a good TV show, but I don't know anything about their team, right? Um, or SHG. You mean who's Shogun? Hawks? Shogun's oh, on Oh, wait. Uh, okay, Shogun is going to win on GAM, and then SHG... I was like, I'm like, wait, did they have a betrayal arc? And, like... No. <laughs> SHG is a totally different thing, then. They're the team. Uh, do you know anything about SHG? Are they... What's yeah. the series going to look like? SHG yeah. is, like, the, the Japanese team. Ah, uh, okay, simply. gotcha. They're the yeah. team that got second place, took one game off PSG in the finals. They're all the Japanese team. They have Evie in the top lane. It's the only one I recognize. Oh, right. Right, um, right. They have two Koreans, mid and jungle. Don't know their names, but I watched. Mm. I watched the finals because I was like, "Oh, you know, P like PSG. Are they going to lose to the Japanese team? Because it's the first time, second time Japan had to compete against uh, them, but they only got one slot last time, right? And they get two this time mm. at the last mm -hmm. international. So uh, it wasn't that close, even though it was a three-one. Um, mm -hmm. Evie is still looking good, actually. Um, and to be fair, before he left Heritage, he didn't look bad. Actually, they were starting to like get kind of good, but then. That team was just not good enough overall as a match. And uh, anyways, the point is, it could be close. Like I honestly think that Vietnam should not have two seeds. It doesn't really make sense. Uh, watching Vikings, watching even previous games, like they have the name power, sure, from years gone by. But like they, oh, actually, once in a while, Gam does make an upset. That's true. But I would say, like, the region as a whole, I think, has continued to decline because, like, of all the scandals, because the infrastructure is gone, money's even less than before. So don't know how you can get that close to zero, but uh, they're, they're finding ways. So I actually think this is going to be a close match. I mm. would give the edge to Gam if I was a betting man, but I'm going to go 2-1 with Sopping because I think that that team has a lot more upside to them. Like, they aren't just, like, the same old, same old people. And doing the same shit every time. No, mm. that's a very narrative driven. I, I just did not watch VCS finals, right? But I, yeah. I, I've been on the downtrend, and every time we get to a Worlds, we remember, oh, Gam's so sick, right? But like, mm. it, it's basically Kiaya still, Levi still, you know, very good players. They have a new mid laner named Emo. Right, right, yeah. Who don't know who that is. And then they, they're bot lane, I also don't know. So like, I, I'm not really convinced that they'll be any good. Maybe it's a good news that they have new players, but. We're both basically I I, like kind of in the dark about them. I just I would yeah. rather cheer for like the new team on the block. I think I, I think uh, Gam was at MSI this year because I remember Emo. So um, easy love with Elio. Do you remember though, Elio? I I don't know. I don't know. Don't <laughs> that don't ask me. me. Don't ask me that. Um, yeah. I, I yeah. I'll, okay. You gonna you gonna vote for the new guys? I'll just vote for Gam. I don't know. It doesn't. We don't know enough about these teams. Uh, but I'm gonna. I you know I'm gonna watch the vods. Because it's at 4 a.m., so I'll watch the VODs later. Um, all right, let's kind of move on, and let's talk about kind of just like the general stage here. Um, so the main stage, you know, we're eventually going to get the play-ins team seated in. But pretty much what's going to happen is if you're a play-ins team, you get to play against all the pool one seats. So everybody who is... Uh, first place in their region, right? So mm -hmm. pretty much every everybody in the planes is gonna hope to play against FlyQuest <laughs> and maybe G2, right? Because then otherwise they gotta play against BLG or Hanwha Life. So um, yeah, uh, I think that's gonna be interesting. <laughs> and then in the second seeds, we know we got all the middle teams. We got Gen we got the seconds and third seeds are gonna have a blast. That's gonna be real, the, probably the the crazy matches, right? We got our boys team Liquid. We got Gen G in there. We have um. 
you know, we have, who do we have? Top Esports in there, um, in the second seed. So, uh, and then who Fnatic in there, right? So um, that's going to be interesting. Third seeds is, of course, all the third seeded teams. Um, we, we got Dan Wan in there. We got, uh, we got, who do we got in China? We got uh, LNG or Weibo, one of those two. I think, it, I think it's LNG. Uh, so a lot of interesting teams. And of course, for the four seeds, uh, we're going to find out in play-ins, but then the rest is like T1 and, uh, and Weibo Gaming, which is just insane that T1 is the fourth seed. Um, so that, that was a very terrible breakdown of the main stage. But um, let's just get it out of the bag, okay? Let's just let's just let's just put it all on the on the table, okay, Kevin? It's late at night. Let's just talk about it. Who oh is making it out of groups? Who is our top eight? Who is advancing? Um, you know, we can just go down the list. Actually, um, honestly, when I envisioned this podcast episode i was thinking of actually sharing my screen and doing like one of those tier list maker things but i mm -hmm. forgot it's too late we're just gonna talk it out okay so oh, okay. um yeah yeah uh i don't know how to share my screen i don't know if we could do it part way through a podcast so fuck it um uh, let's just i don't see a button that looks like a share screen on here oh i see it hold on let me try it hold on i don't want to share you too much it? of my screen hold <laughs> on. okay you, you talk you... no no, no right, hey so... kevin Listen to me, okay? Uh -huh. I'm going to find the tier list maker, and then yeah. you are going to talk about some of your most interesting teams in the main stage now. Okay, sounds mm -hmm. good to me. Yep. I think for me, the people to really watch out during the main stage, uh, I mean, I actually don't think it would be your typical. I think Dumb One would be the most interesting for the Koreans. I think that going into this tournament, yes, they're the third C. Yes, they are sketchy as heck. But I think if the meta is rolling in, if Showmaker is motivated, as well as he gets the right priority in the champ select, I think we're going to have an incredibly interesting time through him. From LPL, it's kind of, I think it's the same story as before, except that the, the wild card would actually be um, top esports here because Cream is not at his first tournament. I think mm. last time they were the ones who did the biggest threat to Gen G. And mm -hmm. them being such a threat at an international tournament with so little experience means that, like, they have so much more upside. Well, I mean, yes, BLG is going to be interesting, but I don't think they're going to be, like, this roster and its core has had so many tournaments to show us that, like, while they are a world-class team that's probably top three and in a favor to win um, behind uh, Gen G at least, mm -hmm. they don't have the matchup against Gen G. And maybe even T1, right, historically. So... I think in that case, the top esports is kind of like your BLG of last year, ironically. And then from yep. NA, I am still a hater. I think Liquid is better than FlyQuest uh -huh. internationally. I think I, I, especially after Whipple had his meltdown, which we might need to talk about in a very oh, I forgot about that fashion because that was <laughs> yeah, yeah. truly uh, an acid trip. And I'm not gonna make fun of it too much because I think he he personally made his personal stuff. But I would say that like I don't think that that's the best environment to go into worlds with. So I think yeah. Liquid is the NA team to watch out for. And then finally, <clears throat> for EU, it I mean what, what's there to say? It like this year I think the production got worse. A lot of things got worse. I think G two is really as usual their only hope. But their hands look worse, and the yeah. champ pool before the Giant Worlds patch looked worse. Yeah. All right. That's a good summary of a couple of the teams out there. I like it. We are going to talk about Bupo, and we're definitely going to talk about... Sorry. Okay, cool. Yeah, bless you. Um, so here I have the tier list. Um, this is not really a tier list. I just, I think I did it. I did first seed, second seed, third seed, fourth seed, and then playing team. I think I did the best... Oh, I think Mad Lions goes down here. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> this is the best... Last this place. is the best... Yeah, this is the best I could do. Uh, so let's just assume... Right for the sake of conversation, that PSG and Hunter Thieves are gonna make it out, right? So one, two, three, four, and then we need two more, right? Is it two more, or just is it two total? Who? How many teams make it out of plans? There's four, right? Two, two, just two. Oh shit! Teams, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, four? eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So it has to be. It has to be two more. Yeah. But it's round robin, so I don't. It's the, it's like the. It's not round robin really. It's like the Swiss. So. It might yeah, be something four. Like I think it's four. It's four teams. Four teams make it out. I remember from. Uh, it has to be sixteen teams. Um, 
in the in the main stage. So we got 16 teams in the main stage. Let's assume that it's what we all assume, right? It's PSG, 100 Thieves, Mad Lions, Gam. Let's just assume that that's who makes it out. I don't know. We could we could switch it up a little bit, but it doesn't matter too much. They're not winning the tournament, okay? So let's pick who our top eight is, and let's just we'll just put them in the top row. So how do I make one of these? And uh, add a row above, okay? This team making it out of groups. All right, who do we got? So do we all agree it's BLG, right? Hanma Life, Genji. These guys are going to make it out probably, right? I think these three teams are shoe-ins. They are for sure making it out of groups. Yes. Any disagreements there? Uh, not no? only to keep in mind this, uh, not just their power ranking wise, it's because of their seeding, right? They just can't exactly. play against the other heavy hitters that as much, except for Genji, I guess, could play yeah, against BLG technically. Well, Gen G is second seed, so they could really anything could happen to them. They could really play anybody. That's yeah. terrifying. Um, Except for Hanwha. Yeah, yeah. Because um, yeah, there's no cross region play, as, or, or there's a lot of rules to avoid cross region play. I don't know. That's I don't the know if only you difference literally from can... last year's Swiss that you can't cross region. In yeah. The, at least the first round, and then there's no rematches too, or something like that, because they yeah. that was a problem last year. Right. Um, okay. So that's who we have uh, so far. Making the groups is three. We need five more teams. Um, let's just do the Asian teams first, okay? Because it's going to be a lot of Asian teams. If I'm being honest, it's going to be at most one, maybe two Western teams make it out of groups, right? So let's just stick as many, like, you know, as much as we want to meme top esports, as much as we want to meme TN, they were second seed. They did have MSI experience. They were pretty good in the regular season. I think TN won MVP. So... Right, TN is probably making it out of groups, maybe? I don't know. Actually, that's a controversial one. So we'll add it here, here. I got this. Mm. Add a row below. Oh, I put too many. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think the tiers are this. Maybe making it out of groups. Okay. We got, this is the worst tier list ever. We're, we're just, you know, the reason why people watch is our charm, okay? Not our efficiency. Uh, so top esports, we'll say they're a maybe, okay? Because I could see a world where top esports is like struggling in main stage, and they actually have to play like the last their like final life against a Western team, and like that could be like I could see a world where you get like G two versus top esports versus like one of the last spots in group stage, right? Like, um, because there is going to be a lot of like good teams are going to knock each other out and allow room for like a worse team to get in. Like that's pretty much how energy got in last year, right? Energy made it out of group stage by beating C9 and by beating G2, G2. pretty much. Yeah. And I think they beat a, a wildcard team, right? So like they got kind of lucky because they got to dodge most of the hard competition where G2, to be honest, they got kind of unlucky. They had to play Weibo Gaming, Damwon, and then NRG and then BLG, right? So like, G2 had it really hard last year. They had to play against NRG, which like really sucked for them because they, you know, were so much worse. So, um, you know, that could happen this year to top esports, right? I think G2, we could put it in maybe making it out of groups. Uh, we can put LNG. We can put, you know, let's just put all the Asian teams in here, right? I, I think these are these are fair as like maybe making it out of groups, right? And then let's talk about some of the Western teams. Okay, we already talked about G2. Like, let's not cope. Okay, let's not make fun of them. They didn't have a great uh, regular season. I think EU as a whole, LEC uh, and Summer Split was pretty weak looking. But G2 always pulls it together at Worlds and Internationals, right? They don't always get across the finish line, but they're definitely always a threat. They're always scary. They're always this close to being like the greatest, the best at um, taking down a big team. So we'll put G2 in the maybe for Western teams. Now you said... You think TL is better than FlyQuest. Do you actually genuinely believe TL is going to make it out of groups this year? Yeah. Should we put him in the maybe? We put him in the maybe. Are we putting him in the maybe? I just no, want to know. I think we're playing no? in the one under the maybe. Because you look at there are nine teams there, eight of which are better than Team Liquid. Sad face. Okay put you in like there. I, I think they have the power to do it but it's really just bracket luck at that point they're they're probably a top eight team in the world yeah but it, their seeding is not they're not the first seed yeah um definitely i i think it's gonna be tough so like i think when it comes to na teams 
Um, this is definitely the most hopeful I've been in a while, just because we actually are coming off of success recent. Like, Last Worlds, we had success. Recent MSI, we had success. EWC, we kind of had success, right? So it's like, genuinely, this is some of the best time NA has been in a long time. But the teams are looking damn good, right? Like, the, like you know, Asian teams are always looking good. But these Asian teams, there's a lot of good-looking Asian teams. Like, I think Weibo Gaming and is is surprisingly good. LNG is surprisingly good. Damwon Gaming is probably surprisingly weak. And T1 is probably surprisingly weak. But, like, I think, you know, Damwon Gaming is potential for upset territory. But T1 has always been one of those teams where it's like, we can get close to beating T1. We can get, we can take games off of T1. But we can't actually take T1 in a series, right? LCS has literally never taken a series off of T1. I don't know if that's going to happen, right? Are we going to be able to take a best of three off of T1? I just, it just doesn't seem realistic, right? Um, so, yeah, who, whose spot are we taking, right? So that's what I was kind of saying. It's like for Team Liquid or for FlyQuest or Fnatic or whatever, right? If they're going to make it out of groups, it's all about the luck of the draw, right? We, we happen to play against one of the weaker Asian teams. We beat them. We happen to play against a play ins team. We beat them. And then we happen to play against a European team, and then we beat them, right? That's kind of like the angle that we got we to gotta look for. Um, let's talk about FlyQuest, right? Uh, you think FlyQuest is obviously worse than Team Liquid? I mean, I think a lot of people agree. I have some thoughts about it, but put them in the probably not, right? We're not putting them in this group here. We're putting them down here, right? I, I mean, they're going to definitely, if we get them as our route, we basically are beating a wild card on our way to Worlds. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> the <laughs> the FlyQuest. Right? Not FlyQuest. Uh, I said FlyQuest, but Oops. yeah. I just, uh, well, yeah. I, I, I keep my word. Then. <laughs> yeah, okay. FlyQuest, yes. I, I, I do think FlyQuest, um, so let's talk about TL versus FlyQuest a bit more, okay? Let's talk about FlyQuest in general a bit more, all right? Blippo has been a hot subject. It's NA, we got to talk about it, all right? Um, I, I think a lot of people rate TL higher because, um, of their overall consistency throughout the year. Most analysts, right? Um, Dom, Kajrel, everybody on the Double If, Medio, Sneaky podcast, like all these sorts of analysts and groups of people share the same sentiment where Team Liquid is better than FlyQuest, but on that day, Team Liquid played kind of badly and FlyQuest played very well. And that's the general sentiment. I have a different take, Okay. Kevin, this is not um, anti-TL, but th this is more pro-FlyQuest, but it's going to sound a bit anti-TL in that I think FlyQuest, they got to play TL so much throughout the year that they learned how to beat TL very well. And I think the main problem was Umpty versus Inspired, okay? I think that FlyQuest, honestly, they downloaded TL. And they found a very good way to beat them because TL is not a perfect team. They're very, very good, very organized, uh, but they're, you know, obviously they're still beatable. So I think FlyQuest found the angle. So, but I think against a general pool or population of teams, TL is gonna, on average, do better against, on average, against a large variety of styles and teams. Or FlyQuest, I don't think is has that same quality. I think against like. The general population FlyQuest is weaker, but if FlyQuest gets to play one team over and over again, I do think that they have the players on the team that are very smart that are going to overcome and like download a certain team, right? So like if FlyQuest got to play G2 over and over again, I actually think FlyQuest could eventually just get really good against G2 or something like that. But kind of like the eight games or whatever it was that we played at MSI against G2 with EG, yeah. except we would get better. Yeah, yeah. This time they would get better, right? Uh -huh. um, yeah, I do think FlyQuest is like that, but that's not how Worlds works, right? I do think FlyQuest is a team that would have benefited heavily from going through play-ins, but obviously they're the first seed. They don't have to do that, so that's great for them. But they seem like a team that would have loved to go into play-ins and just get a lot of reps, get a lot of practice, uh, and lose a lot and learn from it. <laughs> um, so that's kind of my take on this team. And now let's talk about Whippo. So... Um, Bupo has been going on an absolute rampage. He has been talking mad crap about everybody. Uh, he basically came to Europe, started streaming, hit 10 to 12k viewers on Twitch, and was nonstop talking shit about all the European players. Um, I think notably he was calling out Vladdy and Vithio as being like 
like kind of like bottom feeder parasites sort of like parasites, don't play a lot lazy asses don't play a lot yeah like, um, <laughs> yeah i think he was telling some other players to like you know go die and stuff and like get 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 cancer these sorts of fun gamer lingo stuff in front of like 12k viewers as a pro player so um he was he was all over social media all over the front pages um what are your thoughts on bupo give me some give me some some input here um so beforehand i thought he had gone off his rocker he's always given wild takes in the sense of like he's interesting and he's a little bit non-conventional it's the same with his champ picks um but i think this time there was just something deeply wrong i think anyone could tell like you you see him on interviews all the time in talk shows he's spicy but he's not so direct personal and like truly just toxic gamer all the time right so i wasn't sure what had happened maybe he had gotten out of argument or something we hear later that it's a mental health thing that he admits he has but then he also proceeds to flame still as he's doing it so, <laughs> i mean i guess he's not lying um if it's a mental health thing, I'm not going to go too much into it. It's like, there are a lot of reasons it could have happened. It doesn't necessarily excuse it, but it makes it more understandable for me. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, someone's got to put, like, your man, if you got a manager, you, like, cut that stream off, like, five minutes and you're like, oh, shit, oh, fuck. Like, I need to I need to save his career. Uh, yeah. So maybe his manager is his girlfriend. You know, we've made fun of um, the the toxic relationships sometimes that we we get to see little bits of, but... I don't know what yeah. it is, um, and that I, I think he needs help. I don't know if it's the right mindset to go into wealth. Maybe if you think you're better than everyone, uh, you might just like gig a dumpster and EU team. And that makes it extra spicy. But I think this is past the level of like I can have fun with how spicy it is because it feels almost like sad. So yeah, but both definitely not feels sad. Actually, I just don't get what this was about otherwise. Yeah, I mean, he admitted to having mental health struggles. Like, LS reached out to him personally to see if everything was going okay. He went to see a professional, and he confirmed he had a diagnosis, right? Um, I, th I think it is some sort of mental health break, manic episode sort of, yeah, uh, situation. Um, he had one of his former teammates, Hillisang. I think this was the big eye-opening one when he was talking about Hillisang. And he was talking about Hillsing's teammates and how they were treating him really poorly. And he started crying on stream and stuff like that. And it was like, um, it just seems so extreme of a reaction to when you look at Hillsing's gameplay and he's running it the fuck down. It's like, you know, I understand if Hillsing's trying really hard and playing really well. But we also heard stories that Hillsing literally doesn't play the game in the off season. And he spends the entire year trying to get back on form because he didn't play for like three, four months straight uh, after he gets eliminated in summer, right, of the previous year. So, like, I, I mean, you know, I yeah. So it, it is complicated, you know, the history of Whippo and Hillisang and their work ethic and, you know, their attitudes towards the other players and that, you know, there's a lot of laziness going on in Europe and, you know, NA knows all about this stuff. But I do think that NA has really combated that image. And I think uh, Bwipo is a part of it. He sees it. It's why you'll never see Bwipo talk trash about Team Liquid is because, you know, Bwipo said himself that, like, impacts the GOAT. APA puts in a lot of work, right? A lot of Team Liquid players do are not lazy. They do not follow this, the, the typical NA, EU, Western player laziness type of thing that uh, we're used to hearing. So I think that when Bwipo was around this environment in NA where everybody's trying hard like crazy, uh, and he goes to Europe and realizes that, you know, maybe the region has deteriorated since he has left. Because mm -hmm. when Bwipo was in EU, he was one of the best players, Right, he was one of the best top laners. He was one of the best one junglers. Best junglers. <laughs> so he came back and said everybody was shit. And I'm like, okay, well, I mean, fair enough. But you just kept saying it. You said it a bit too much. But you, you know, like I, I don't think honestly, this is my hot take. Bubu didn't say anything that was wrong. It was just the way he said it was wrong. That's my I hot agree. take. So. I actually thought when I was yeah. hearing, like, we have noticed it, right? We this was right off the back of was a Hila saying. Going on to the yeah. podcast, someone went. No, it wasn't Hillsing, but it was talking about Hillsing. They were talking about the podcast uh, recently. Car they had the Carzy, Carzy, sorry, Carzy and Hillsing. Uh, is like the combo I was thinking of. But Carzy went on to the podcast with uh, Dami Yamato, and they just like completely revealed that people party. Humanoid was like not giving a shit. Like there were like all these like things that you know are accusations, and I think that 
with Whitbo having the before and after, it's kind of like, okay, if you don't see someone for five years and they're in like puberty, you see the growth, like, oh my God, what a change, right? Whereas if you see him every day, you like barely notice and like it's gradual. So maybe for Europeans, they're used to it. But for him coming back after so long to play seriously and seeing it, it must have been extremely disappointing for him. Um, yeah. Along with whatever issues he's dealing with, like that compounds. I So I think those parts are fine. Where I do take issues, like I have no idea if he's right about Bethio and these other people, right? Because he is part of the the league of contrarians, I would call them. The the LS crew, the Nemesis crew, like... <laughs> it, it, they're not villains, I'm saying contrarians. It's not a bad thing yeah, necessarily. Yeah. I'm just saying that there's a very specific friend group that he won't attack, right? No matter what, even if it might be justifiable or not. Um, like, you know, some people are hard to work with. He To him, that's not a problem, right? I mean, he can work with Inspired. Which is a very high upside and a very low low side, apparently, depending on who you are. So, yeah. all of that to say, he I agree with his take on EU generalized, but I'm very strongly cautious about how he feels about European pros, because when he says Nemesis is one of the best players he's played with, like, I mean, okay, sure. Yeah, but he like, played I with mean, Caps, so, you know. with a lot of good players, because I, I don't yeah. see it, right? Maybe in scrims. But even no. when he was good in the year that he was playing against Joinby, I didn't think he was like one of the best European mids. He was just a top three, right? Which is good, but for the era. Yeah, I mean, I also got to say, like, the things he was saying about Vithio and Vladi or insinuating about them, it's like, how could he possibly know? It's all secondhand stories from other players, right? He's never played <laughs> on a team with Vithio. That's also true. <laughs> like, he, he's also like, he. this is probably the first time he's ever talked to them or met them in a game, right? Because they all came up while he was in NA. Um, so, yeah, that's the Whippo stuff. I, enough about Whippo, right? We, we, everybody's talked about it to death. It was interesting. We got our rounds. We, we talked about him. Um, so let's let's continue with the tier list. I actually accidentally stopped sharing, so that's my bad. This is going to be the most scuffed podcast we've done in a while, but that's fine. Uh, back to the tier list. It is back up. <laughs> so... We got BLG, Hanwha Life, Gen.G definitely making it out. All right, let's finalize our top eight, okay? Who are we putting in our final top eight? I want you to give me the next team. Who is for sure? Who's like fourth place, you know? Not not even like, oh, they're probably going to make it out. Who's like the fourth best team looking out of groups, do you think, after BLG, Hanwha Life, and Gen.G? Who, who I do you got? top yeah. esports. I already told you guys that's my dark horse for the those teams to look out for. Cream out okay. this world, I think he's going to be... I, I think he's going to be better. And then okay. that team has already got the firepower. They are inconsistent, but they're that top four for sure for me. Okay. That's fair. That's good. Um, I'm going to also give a controversial, non-controversial take. I will be next. Uh, it's going to be T1. T1. Oh, it's going to be T1. Oh, okay. I think it's going to be T1. Oh, okay. It's... Oh, man, okay. You picked a fourth seed? A fourth Dude. seed? Dude, they used to they... be in the plans, you know? I know, and T1, <laughs> hey, they looked bad domestically, and I, I just gotta say, like, there's two big things that are, like, really convincing to me that they are going to make it out. Number one, the meta change is very beneficial for them, okay? So people are saying a lot about the meta change, the switch to AP mids, AD junglers, pretty much a return to, like, the normal classic meta that we always see, right? T1 has always been good at this meta. And so have a lot of teams. A lot of teams are good at this meta. But I think the main thing is that a lot of teams are good at the AP mids, AD junglers. But T1 was abnormally bad at the AD mids and AP jungler meta. They were just really bad at it. So I do think that them moving away from the thing they're bad at is just enough to make them look good enough. To, to just like, you know make it out of group stage, right? I'm not talking they're going to win. I'm not even saying they're top four. They're just going to top eight. They have never not made it out of groups. And this team is never not made out of groups. This team is very, very good still. And I think Zeus is still one of the best top laners in the tournament. Um, one thing that you cannot criticize is that Zeus domestically, while his team was on fire, was still putting out S-tier performances every game. Uh, and I think Guma, to a lesser degree, was playing very well. But like... You know, the whole team's on fire. Guma was still very rock solid. Maybe not as insane or consistent as we've seen him in past years, where he was really, really good, but still one of the best on his team. And I think that in group stage, right, T1, they don't really struggle against bad teams, right? T1 is not a team that, like, underestimates bad teams, drops a game, and blah, 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 blah. T1 is a team where if you're worse than them, they just shit stomp you. There's no counterplay. There's no, like... 
it's not even interesting, right? They just completely poop on you. Where, like, you can look at a better team, right? Like, BLG is a team that, at this tournament, is definitely better than T1, by far. But BLG is a team that's just going to drop games. They're just going to lose to a lower-seeded team because they underestimate you. In fact, that's just a Chinese team thing in general, right? Like, top esports is the same thing. If you're weaker than them, they're going to underestimate you, they're going to mess around, and they're going to drop a game accidentally. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my reasoning for T1. Um, who else are we moving up here? Yeah, that's fair. I, I do think there's not too many people to, like, confidently move up. LNG, Weibo, Danwon, right, the rest of the Asian teams, I can see all of these teams being fallible to a top-tier Western team. Pretty much just G2, Fly, or TL, right? Because um, they're, they're not super consistent, so I think the things that hold LNG back are um, obviously Scout and the whole Yigao and everything situation was very stressful. Um, you know, who knows what kind of mental toll that place is. It puts a lot of question marks on LNG, right? I don't know how it's going to affect them, really. Uh, mm. I also think they... Uh, but I do think the meta changes are going to benefit LNG because um, you get to... Uh, Gala is going to be able to play more traditional AD carries, right? You're still going to have the Jins, You're still going to have some MFs here and there. But Gala, you can play Jinx. Jinx is really strong right now. And that's a much more traditional AD carry. And that's going to help, I think, LNG a lot. I'd also argue uh, LNG, Gala, and Scout. Like, most Scout after playoffs... Sorry, last year it kind of fell. But El Gala has almost always been a monster at internationals. He shows up yeah. when there's a high pressure. And I think in the in the three losses in your out format, where a mm. lot of games are just going to feel like Elon matches, basically, I think he's always been good. Um, he's won so many MSIs for that reason. He's always been even good when his teams are dog. Uh, so I think that makes him, like, why RNG so consistently made it out before. Mm. It's because this yeah. guy is the anchor, right? He's not... Like, Jackie Love has higher highs, but not by a lot. And Jackie Love's lows are more consistently lower, right? So, or they just show up more often. So, I, I really think, like, we've got Scout and you know, on the team. That's disgusting. Just, like, on paper. Who, who can actually match that? Yeah, I got to say, I, th I think I'm putting LNG up here. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm pretty convinced. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I said all that. Of course I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think Hong, their support, is definitely the weakest player. He might be the weakest Asian player in the entire tournament. I think Hong is a very weak support. It's not very good. I don't know. Summit's here. <laughs> That's true. I meant from an Asian team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From an Asian yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true, I just got to throw one more in because he screwed over to so many of our teams. That's true. That's fair. That's fair. Fuck Summit. I mean, whatever. I mean, did I just say that out loud? Whoops. Oh, okay. Uh -oh. uh, let's, let's let's talk about Weibo Gaming now. <laughs> they were the finalists. They made it to finals last year um, at Worlds, but they had the Shy, notably, and they had a different jungler. I forget. It was Weiwei, right? Who's now LNG jungler. Yeah. Um, but now they have just Wei. <laughs> um, also which is a go to jungler. Um. He also is a go to jungler. He's a two time MSI champion. He was on years on RNG. Uh, Wei is, you know, very good. Oh, no, no. Weibo Gaming is. Oh, my God. Wei is on BLG. I'm an idiot. Okay, I mixed it up. BLG or Weibo Gaming has Tarzan. Tarzan's a great jungler. Um, so Tarzan hasn't won any, uh, any international titles like Wei. And Wei is obviously on BLG and they're gonna maybe win the whole thing but um tarzan is on weibo gaming uh do you, i mean they're a pretty good team right i think light is underrated as one of the best 80 carries in the world right now really really good uh i do think the weak members of weibo gaming are going to be breathe and xiaohu um notably breathe uh i don't know if you watch i will dominate's world tier list but he made a world's tier list with all the players he ranked breathe like rank like 53 or something okay and that is, like, below, like, literally 20 different Western players. And I was like, okay, Dominate, I understand you don't like Breathe. He's a bad player, whatever. He didn't look great. But to put him below, like, 20 different Western players, like, Breathe is literally playing against Bin. And, like, yeah, Zika. Yeah, like playing against some <laughs> disgustingly 369. Like, you're just 369. Getting, you're, like, getting your head bashed in by, like... Like the, like, the eighth best Chinese top laner is still disgustingly strong. So, like, the fact that he can mm -hmm. make it to top four, yeah, he might yeah. not be a top four top laner. doesn't mean he's 53rd. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, so, I, I always, I found fault in uh, I Will Dominate's tier list where it was, like, you know, um, 
you know, he, he ranked Breathe really lowly, and I was just like, okay, yeah, he didn't look great, but, like, he didn't look great against some of the best top players in the world, where, like, you know, Bupo and Sniper are struggling in North America. <laughs> Broken Blade is losing lane to Merwin, bro. He's so, definitely like, worse than Impact. I'll give him that, but, like, that, I mean, I mean okay. But Impact's yes, not he, in the bottom 40s, right? Yeah, but, like, I just gotta say, like, like yes and no, right? Impact is a very good player, but remember, his competition was, like, Thanatos and Sniper and Blippo. Like, it's much easier to look good against those guys than for Breeze to look good against Bin. You know, that's all, that's just all I'm saying. Like, Broken Blade, yeah, he's the best West EU top laner, but he's losing to Merwin and Oscar, who he ranked, like, 60-something, you know? So... I, I just I just had a lot of problems with Dom's tier list, and I'm just gonna say like Weibo Gaming is gonna be a very good team, and I am gonna put them up here. I just don't think they're gonna actually not make it out of groups. Uh, Light and Crisp are might be one of the best bot lanes of the tournament. They are absolutely giga cracked. Um, yeah. Anything else on Weibo Gaming? Mm, no, I, I think the only thing I'm a little worried about is Light has been here before, very hype coming yep. in, did fall short a little bit, but I think he is. I mean, you've had years to get better, and he has looked better. So I'm hoping that that's just not... Some people are just domestically gods, right? Name was really good. Never showed up internationally. I'm hoping... He wow, does. that is old, bro. That is over 10 years old. Oh, my God. I mean, God. that's the first AD Name. carry that comes to mind. Because most Chinese AD carries do well internationally, surprisingly, right? Yeah. When um, EDG Name, that is old news, brother. Old that is news. a throwback. Best AD carry in are... the world, allegedly. Stomps Uzi. <laughs> Goes to yeah, Worlds, was... does not play well. I mean, he was sick, but, like, damn. And then yeah. just falls off. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, well, yeah, I mean, Light did make it to finals last year. So did Crisp, and so did Jiaohu. So I think we can also talk about Jiaohu, where Jiaohu is obviously, he's the GOAT. He's very good. He's won so many MSIs against Faker. Like three I can't or four even count. Now? We can't even count him. I don't even know. It's so many. But let's not kid ourselves. Jiaohu is, like, probably... The second weakest player on this team behind Breathe, right? Um, he 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 doesn't on look paper, amazing. Yes, You're yes right. he doesn't look amazing. But his teammate or his opponents are very strong. He's playing against Knight and Cream and stuff like this, and some very good mid laners. So you know, Zhao is definitely the weak. Yeah, you go. Yeah, Zhao the one of the weakest Asian mid laners at this tournament, right? From an Asian team. Let's be real. So that's why, if there's going to be an upset, it's going to be along the likes of Weibo Gaming. Or we're going to get to a Dan Wan. I think Dan Wan, even though they beat T1, I think Showmaker is coming in as right alongside Jiaohu as one of the weakest mid laners in the main stage, uh, for the Asian teams at least. Um, I do not think Showmaker has looked good in a long time, unfortunately. I love Showmaker, but he's just, he's just not really it anymore. Uh, and I do think that, um, you know, uh, who is it? Mohan? is maybe one of the worst supports in the uh, entire main stage too. Uh, so Damwon, I have, has two very low rated players in my mind. Um, I think Kingin is like fine. He's like not amazing. Like he, he's a clutch guy. He can win worlds, right? Obviously <laughs> That's Kingin pretty good. is pretty good. It's pretty and clutch, he, but he was the major part of winning worlds. Was yes, he MVP? but I think so. Yes. Yes. But <laughs> if we're looking at his performance this year, right? Kingin was, just a mess he was just a mess all year long and he managed to just clutch it up against zeus right which is great and he qualified for worlds against zeus but i could definitely see dan one as a team where i i don't know if i'm going to put them in this upper region here i don't like i i do think they're just going to sit in that maybe right mm -hmm. um so that i have dan one there i think i'm going to keep g2 there um and then one two three four five six seven right so we have this is we have seven Eastern teams, right? So we got to fit one Western All team right, in there, I right? Put Liquid up there. Fuck it. I, I said I was hoping, up there? but I look more, and I still think Liquid's better than G2. So you think Jet Li? Okay, uh, yeah, you're coping for sure, but we can do it. No, Fuck no, it. no. We literally like two weeks ago, <laughs> like no, four weeks ago, before the final against Fly, because we were both saying Liquid would be G2 easily. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I well, watched I don't a lot know of that's cope. Just be I mean, we don't know how they play in this meta. I've watched a lot of Champs Q recently. Okay, G2 literally always matches up to TL, and they always win. <laughs> okay, just... sometimes there's a mix and match of players and stuff, but I just gotta say, man, I G2's mean, pretty cracked. That is cracked. objectively true, but that's just yep. Scrimbucks, buddy. 
Okay, so you're putting TL. All right, we'll put TL here. Okay, TL's making out of groups. Dam one is gonna be down here. Dude, All if right. If NRG can knock G two out of worlds last year and G two looked better hands wise, I I just transitive property over a year in different metas. Okay. All right. Well, hey man, you know what? It's it's our tier list. So if you want to put TL in there, I guess I'm just well, saying you, you it, can veto. You know, I don't have to roll you over. You know I'm gonna vote TL. No, no, you're you're not ruling me over. I'm just saying. I'm just. I don't. I don't know. I just don't. I don't believe in anything, bro. I don't. I'm. I'm dead inside. Okay. <laughs> I. I have no faith. <laughs> Maybe I should. I have no faith. But. Oh no. But <laughs> I was the opposite of the Kobe quote. Okay. <laughs> uh, why are you even here if you have faith? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm play League of Legends, but I do think Dan Juan is the one. That is the team. That will get upset, right? If there is an Asian team that's going to get upset, I think it's either going to be Dan Wan or it's going to be Weibo Gaming, maybe Top Esports. I mean, I could see LNG too, but like it's going to be either the Chi any of the three Chinese teams, not BLG or Dan Wan. Those are the teams that we're going to knock out of Worlds if there was a team to do it, right? And I do think it's going to be along the lines of G2, TL, maybe FlyQuest. I do think FlyQuest is going to come into this tournament as one of the most underrated first seeds in a while. <laughs> they're going to be a very underrated first seed, just because everybody thinks they're shit, because everybody hates Whippo right now. Um, so there's that. All right. Uh, yeah, I don't see Fnatic making it out. I really don't see... I, I mean, PSG, with the way they're playing, I don't really see how they're making it out either. So I just can't put PSG up there, because we already saw them play, right? Um, okay. Now let's close out this podcast. We've been going out for an hour. we got to go to bed. Um, let's make the prediction, okay? Who is winning Worlds? We do this at the beginning of every Worlds tournament. I have an insanely good track record, just to remind everybody. Now, what will we be predicting? Who are you predicting, Kevin, to win 2024 Worlds? Let me hear it. BLG. BLG. You're going to say BLG wins Worlds in 2024. There's just like too many weird options here. And I like don't think Genji will ever make it mm. they just like they mm. physically i physically cannot right mm. it's just against my religion at this point hle honestly should be the favorite if you just look at the recent form and the meadows shaping up for at least a few of their players yep. uh, but i i, I think it, with all that in mind i'm like i mean it could be blg um t1's fourth seed so maybe they'll get knocked out early yep i mean i i'll just say this is why i can't ever vote for hanma life gaming it's 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 one one guy one name you already know it it's Doran. I cannot believe in Doran. Doran's the reason Genji <laughs> never made it, and not just being Genji as an Oregon trophy. Oh, I mean I yes, think but plays I think okay, Doran actually has some of these worlds compared to Chovy's. No, what are you talking about? Do you remember last year worlds and Dor Doran was on Genji? He just flashed over a wall where nobody was there as Aatrox and lost his team the game. Do you not remember that shit? I do remember. <laughs> that. I forgot he was on Genji last year. That's how bad it was. Huh. Yeah, yeah. No, no Doran right. is the mega griefer. The mega international griefer, okay? I will never believe in Doran internationally. I just can't. All right, you can win all the domestic titles you want, Doran. I don't care. Uh, Peanut is kind of a close second to also a bit of an international choker. Not really, because he, he's, he's been to so many international tournaments, but I have seen Peanut so many times just really not make it over the finish line. And I think, like, he... Yeah, I just I just don't really see it. The the people on Han My Life Gaming that could really see like push this team over the edge, it's it's just the bot side, right? It's Zeka, it's Viper, and it's Delight. These guys seem like international powerhouses. I mean two of them have won already. But yeah, they they are international gods. So that's what's gonna be the pros for Han I don't see them winning. Genji also really hard for me to see them winning. Uh, because I don't know if Chovy's going to get over his demons necessarily, right? Every year we say he's the best player going to Worlds. I still believe that he is the best, one of the best looking players going to this Worlds. But like, he always fails internationally. He always does something stupid internationally. He never has not done something stupid at Worlds, right? He finally won MSI, but like, damn, bro, he, he's always been a weird guy internationally. Um... Yeah, BLG seems like the only option, right? Uh, but that is not who I'm going to predict. I will be predicting a different team. And it is because it is in honor of a certain member of our podcast that is not here today. 
okay? And he should be here. His name is the League Dad, and he would blindingly ignore all the anal analyzations and everything and just predict T1. And so T says T1 is going to win Worlds. So I, in respect for the League Dad, am going to say, like, yeah, there's no way actually T1's winning this Worlds. There's like no hell. There's, they're not good enough, sorry. Um, T1's not winning Worlds. Fuck, man. Am I just predicting BLG2? I think I am predicting BLG. I think it's I'm really so hard to not How did you just talk a circle back to I don't back? know. Dude, I don't know. to BLG, but, like, it, it, the problem <sighs> with BLG is just, like, yeah, we haven't seen them convincingly take down the top Korean threats, even though they look, like, basically, like, you can't beat them if you're below them in ranking. It also yeah. doesn't... We don't... We don't have the the data, right? They, we, there's no way, yeah. But there's, HLE, there's no way knows, they like, they could just not be exciting like we we have no idea and there's no way it's t1 right no way t1 magically wins worlds this year bro i was thinking about this when i saw the music <laughs> video how much t1 was in that music i'm pretty sure the animators were sweating bullets in the F fourth seed match because yeah. like actually how how awkward would it have been if faker wasn't at worlds this year um it would have been very awkward yes i think there's physically no way like physically like literally Faker's arm might explode in semifinals. If you know <laughs> I'm Yo, really but Poby. Poby comes in hot, right? No, Poby comes Faker in the same zone. Faker without an arm is still better than Poby because Faker's <laughs> on comms, okay? Oh, he can God. Play Yumi mid, and then he can swap with Carrier, play Yumi support, and still be better for the oh, team. Oh, yikes. I just. Yikes. No, it's actually Reckless going to AD carry and then. or support, and then Carrier going to mid. True, true. Reckless is actually the T1 sub. Kind of hype. He's the only hype. sub they brought. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually... Kind of pog. If Reckless gets a world skin, though, I think it's all worth it. Pog. Pretty hype. Um, <laughs> No way T1 wins worlds, right? I do think people, unironically, are going to believe that T1 can win worlds. And I kind of feel like it's possible. I get... Like, for example, right? It Who's more likely to win worlds? Is it Top Esports or T1? Top Esports, by far, was the better team right coming into this worlds i still feel like t1 has a better chance of winning worlds than top esports <laughs> like, i feel like top no, esports I, I, I think top is a, higher than this one no i i don't believe it i don't believe it i i feel like if top esports were t1 if they matched up in like quarterfinals or something i would probably predict t1 i mean we'd have to see how it turns out how they got there but like i don't know i i feel like the only teams that could really beat t1 is like a blg or like hanwha life or Gen G. Like, if they had to match against them, I think they would lose. Man, is it BLG? Is BLG just going to win this tournament? Are they just the favorites? I think they are. I think they're just the favorites, huh? And I think it feels really good to predict BLG. All right, I'm going to predict BLG for now. Okay, we'll both predict BLG. We'll be LPL supporters this year, okay? BLG is winning worlds. Let's talk about the music video. You already mentioned it. Uh, insane amounts of controversy. I really like the song. It's Heavy is the Crown by Linkin Park. Banger song. I'm actually still listening to it. I listened to it a couple times today already. Um, feels like old Linkin Park, right? I think a lot of bands that like have a resurgence, they don't sound like how they used to sound. Um, but definitely, Linkin Park sounded like how they used to sound. They have a completely new singer, right? It's a girl versus a guy singer, obviously, but... The, like their vibe is like the same you know so uh but other than that a lot of controversy around the video what, what do you think about the the new world song kevin i actually still liked it i i didn't have any of the like i mean yeah once i saw the comments i did say like yeah i noticed that but i didn't think none of it really bothered me i wanted to see lincoln park as someone who grew up with lincoln park and they were yep. in the video sick i wanted to see t1 blg the challengers i wanted to see all the storylines they were there very cool. I saw some yep. people comment they all look too eight, like too similar or whatever. I'm like, oh, fine. I could tell who was who, sort of. At least like, I'm gonna be real. Besides Faker and a couple other people, when they're animated, I can barely tell. So the mm -hmm. the yes, they have the jerseys, but I'm like, yeah. I mean, they, it's just very stylized. And frankly, I know Shaohu how he looks. I know how Uzi looks. Like I know how some of the goats look. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me to pick Chovy out of a lineup right now, I actually don't know what he looks like. Yeah, I. I, I'm this is where I'm gonna push back and I do agree with the general community. Like legitimately Bin when he first showed up in the music video, I thought he was Deft. He looked like exactly like Deft. He because we have reference. Deft was in the last year's music video 
and I was like, oh, that just looks like Def from last year's music video. So that's what I thought. And then Def tweeted it out, Bin tweeted it out. And they're like, why do I look like Def? And Def's like, why am I in this video? So like, you know, I think it's fair to kind of believe that, uh, think that. I don't. I think if you're um, a raving fan, a Korean fan, know that you're justified in that. Yeah, it, they. I don't know. I believe that they were kind of animated a bit weird. Um, that's for Bin. I do think Chovy, he looked like Chovy in one of the shots, but then in a different shot later on, he didn't look like Chovy. He just didn't look like anybody recognizable, honestly. Uh, and it was actually just in general hard to tell that it was Chovy. Um, oh, Chovy was in the video. I was he was in the video. Seeing, I could not pick him out of a lineup. Yes. So maybe you're not one to ask about the the way people look in I this video. The then. I enjoyed the song, and I enjoyed yeah. that they were trying to tell a story. I like Linkin Park. I was like, okay, cool. I checked yeah. all my boxes. I'm not a critic. Like, I'm just, yeah, I guess we do a podcast, but I'm just not a, an aficionado, I guess, at this kind of thing. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I'll I'll be I'll be the whiner. I'll be the yeah, winger. Go ahead. Um, You're very that, much entitled to your opinion. Yep. Um, let's see. I I do think also it was really cool to get Masu in the video. That was actually super hype. I was like, damn, that's cool. Masu's in the video. Like he looks cool, and he was playing Varus, and he was pretty sick. He did like get wrecked by Chovy, so that kind of sucked. Um, in the video, of course. Uh, and then Caps was in the video. I thought that was pretty cool. He had some good moments. Um. I think the other criticism was that there's too much Linkin Park like animated shown in the music video. And after watching it a few times, I agree. I just simply agree that there was too much Linkin Park in the video. Uh, not because I didn't want Linkin Park in the video. It's just that the way Linkin Park was cut into the video is that they would cut to like them singing and screaming and stuff. But it would be in between in the middle of the fights. And it would just make me like not... The fights, the fights between... The players didn't look fluid. That's my real complaint. I think a lot of people complain about it because it's like, like uh, the joke is like the winner of Worlds 2024 is Linkin Park, right? Because they're in the video, right? This is the Linkin Park video featuring League of Legends sort of thing. I don't really know if I believe that. The only thing I didn't like is that the fluidity of the animation felt interrupted because you kept cutting back and forth between the band and then the fights. And I think that you could do that. That's fine. You just had to do it better or don't do it at all, right? Don't cut between or cut between them be in better ways. Um, so that's mm -hmm. my complaint. Okay, um, fair. Yeah. Um, I do think that the story that the video was trying to tell didn't really – wasn't like – so a lot of people saying it's like a bad story and that it focused – like it took attention away from like the players and stuff and like – I don't know if it was a bad story is in that it just wasn't really a story all it was was t1 is at the end and people are trying to like take him down but it's like okay sure it's just kind of generic it's not really that interesting um so I, I i didn't really care for the story of the video like quote unquote mm. um and i think a lot of people just wanted rise again right they just wanted to see t1's climb to the top right that's basically that's what worlds was gods last year deft got his we got to see his journey to the top and beat t1 and this time it was like there's no journey really we just wasn't rise ambitions right to the top yeah i said gods was Def's last year yep and then rise was the first one that did that yes oh uh, 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 okay okay yeah yeah it's okay um so you know i don't know i just video yeah i, I just thought, anyway. i didn't i i came out of this and like that was a good song i liked it uh and then i didn't have a problem with the animation i don't i could not name a story for you even if i had to right now yeah it's okay it's okay it's they, they okay. fought they did cuts the music was hype um which not every year is so you know i'm okay with that and because the song is really what you remember it's really good for montages is really good for epic scenes that they they play in and like the closing the um final ceremony so there's a lot of things they can do with it and i think that's what will be memorized remember like honestly the animations a very hit or miss even though the quality is usually like decent i think this one was a little bit off narratively and then if it's not memorable that's okay it wasn't like egregious in my mind yeah i yeah well i yeah i i, I said my points the korean community is not happy um but you know what i think they're it's a little bit overblown but i understand their points so that's that's all we have to talk about that's the music video that's worlds Talked a bit about play-ins, talked a bit about Bupo. Uh Anything else you want to talk about? Anything else we want to bring out before we 
close on this episode and look forward to the rest of plans. I would say the only thing else that I have to put is that we were at 1.3 million viewers on the first day of Worlds. That's 270 grand more than the previous Worlds, or 220 or something like that. And it's like it's like more than basically every day of Valorant final, uh, Valorant Worlds too. And this is day wow, one okay. plans. I think it was like wow. second highest day of Valorant Finals was equal to this basically. Uh, not Valorant Worlds. So I'm like it's pretty crazy. I mean, yes, we had Brazil playing. Yes, we yeah. had Mad Lions playing. Like, it's obvious that's going to be a lot of people watching, right? Because I buy yeah. and spent the Spanish crowd, not you buy. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, just the whole Brazilian scene in general. But I think that's like, I feel like, and this is an, an early theory, we might be getting to the point where it's not that League fans stop caring about League, but they, or the, like, they might stop playing as much, but it's becoming like, you know, if you're a League fan before, you're going to watch Worlds. It's like the Super Bowl. Everyone yeah. tunes in, right? And not everyone plays football in America, I'll tell you that. But there are yeah. people who know the rules and enjoy watching it as an event. So I think if that's where we're at, where you know our major events are still worth watching, great. And I think that that means there is still inherent interest. We just have to really work on how to build the entertainment value of the rest of the season that leads to yeah. that. Or else eventually, Worlds can't just... If you don't know any of the names there at Worlds, how can you really get invested, right? Yeah um yeah i well and i do gotta say plans teams are putting in that work right um the brands that exist all the way in the plans teams are crazy they're bigger than some of the teams in the main stage so that is amazing that's, true. that's awesome it is very good for league of legends and uh, i'm glad to have them around and i hope they stick around you know mad lions pain gaming making it to worlds year after year hey more power to us i just want league to keep going so um, great points, great send off. I'm excited. I hope we can break some records this year. I hope we can get some great games, and I hope Western teams can fucking do something because you know LCS just ended. So how great would it be if the last year of LCS we won Worlds? Maybe TL World Champions 2024. Kevin poops his pants and nuts everywhere. It would be the greatest thing of all time. Um, so let's hear it for TL 2024. All right. What a I'm gonna close it. That'd be. I'm gonna close it out. LCS is the greatest. Uh, try not to be too toxic. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace.